Yeah, the slot ain't for everybody. No, sir. It's man's game, man. <laughs> the slot. You think your boy Baker can play in the slot? DeAndre, yeah. yeah. Play everywhere, bro. <laughs> Come up and, and mash somebody? I don't know about that. <laughs> 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 All right, Giants fans, we are here. We are here to talk about your team in this NFL Draft Recap 2019 edition. The Giants, man, with the sixth pick overall. The David Gettleman led Giants. I call him I call him Gettleman because he got diarrhea in the mouth and he talked too much. Oh, so man. I, I got to disrespect him a little bit. Oh, so man. Just a little too much, man. You need to yeah. simmer it. Yeah, simmer it down yeah. because a lot of the controversy. They need a gag that, order. Yeah. yeah. A lot of the controversy that comes up with this guy is because he's talking too much. But six pick overall, man. Six pick overall, they, they they surprised everybody, man, out of left field except for. Did they? I mean, uh, I don't think it's a surprise. No, 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 no. The position may not be a surprise. No, they were late. They were late today. No, 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 no. So hold on. So, so, so let me get this straight. So y'all were. I'm not surprised the player. Yeah. I'm surprised where he was, where he was how picked. Early, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I think a lot of people were surprised mm. at how early he was picked. But, you know, you're a guy that always says, at the quarterback position, yeah. that's your guy, yeah. go get your guy. And obviously, Daniel Jones was David Gettleman's guy. So uh, he went and got him. Uh, but not when you have another first-round pick and they're pretty close and you can trade back, you know, you can trade up to get, you know, look, look. Yeah, it's a lot of scenarios. Mm -hmm. Even from last year's draft class, mm -hmm. which have been like, Maybe you could have drafted Sam Darnold last year, get Josh Allen this year, or would you rather have the Saquon Barkley last year and then Daniel Jones this year? Where or, you guys fall or, on that? Or maybe Josh Allen and DeAndre Baker with Josh Rosen. Josh Rosen. This is a, this is a thought. This a lot, a of thought. A lot of different scenarios. The the Giants could have went, but let's talk about Daniel Jones, what yeah. he brings to the table. You know, when I was watching the quarterback position, I, I had Kyler Murray at one. Mm -hmm. I had Dwayne Haskins at two, who mm -hmm. could have been another option for them. Sure. Mm -hmm. But when I watched Daniel Jones, I was a bit surprised at how much I liked Daniel Jones. I, I saw his his pre-snap awareness. Mm -hmm. I seen him lining up offensive linemen, telling his receivers what to do. So I know he has it between the ears, a very smart football player. He comes from that, that Cutcliffe tree. The Mannings came from Cutcliffe. So is that connection there to Eli Manning as well? So a little politics maybe behind the pick. Sure. Dude, that chart, the receivers, <laughs> they didn't do him any justice. justice at all. They were dropping passes. They weren't getting to passes. It just, it was just bad around him. So all the blame can't, his 59, what is it, 59% completion percentage. 60, 59, 60, run right. Yeah, yeah, you can't all put that on Daniel Jones. I've I seen him make plays within the pocket. I think he does get in trouble a little bit when he tries to press. He, he's just, it was just too much on him. So, you know, he has some bad film forcing passes as well. But as a quarterback, his cerebralness, his pre-snap awareness, where he wants to go with the football, I think it's a plus for Daniel Jones. You know, it, it, when you, you talk about this Duke team and, and you look at the roster and, you know, it's, it's, it's a basketball school, correct? You know, basketball it's school. a basketball school. And, basketball powerhouse. Uh, ba so I'm sorry, I disrespected mm -hmm. it. Ba basketball. It's Coach K. Yeah, that is Coach K. I'm, 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 I'm Camera crazies. Uh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a basketball powerhouse. Um, so football is kind of pushed back, although they do have a, a, a good um, coach in Cutcliffe. But anyways, um, looking at that roster and, and watching Daniel Jones play, you 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 see a lot of hero hero ball i call mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. um where he he tries to do like Heli said earlier he tries to do a whole lot and, and and it's one thing to 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 know okay you line up here line up there we know to the play I, I know where i'm going with the football because that's my guy or that's my guy but when you got no hope in the guys around you and, and you're the quarterback and you're trying to make things happen you either that either you know you you start to create bad habits or or you, you start to like Heli said press and I don't know how David Gettleman evaluated this guy under those circumstances, and it's it, I don't know I don't know what type of player the Giants had a quarterback. I, I don't know. That's a good question. It's a legitimate question. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you. He's a difficult analysis. In the sense, you know, of course, there's so many different mitigating factors where you go and this, that, and the other, but. In, in college football, and in, in if you talk to the, the, the analytically driven 
scouts and the way people analysts are thinking more and more these days looking at the numbers and they're looking at you know average depth of completion and things of that nature there's a lot to, to, to a lot of cause for pause there because when you watch daniel jones's film you know the completions are coming at behind or just beyond the line of scrimmage there, there really isn't a whole lot going down the field and but you have to kind of peel back some layers if you look at that in a vacuum if you're like, well, this guy, he, I mean, he doesn't push the football down the field. He's, he's not any good at it. Every time he did try to work it down the seam and, and, and hit the receivers in the hands, they dropped the football. Yeah. I will say that, you know, there's certainly some question marks in terms of his arm strength. He doesn't have elite arm strength. You know, those opposite hash outside the number throws, they take a long time to get there. So so you have to make sure he's in the right system. And, and I do think he's in a, a, a system that suits his skills in Pat Shermer's West Coast off. But you're right, you're right. It's very difficult to get a bead on who this guy is. You know, we, we talked about it off air. Imagine imagine with with the existing, based on what we've seen, the existing quote unquote skill set at North Carolina, where, where Mitch Trubisky played. I wasn't high on Mitch Trubisky. Part of the reason was there was a limited amount of film. And they're really, I mean, despite the fact that he had Excellent numbers. Don't get me wrong. Excellent numbers. He had tremendous. He had a tremendous supporting cast, and they really didn't win. You know what I mean? So he had great numbers, an, an uber talented cast, but they didn't win. So, so how am I supposed to evaluate Mitchell Trubisky? He ended up being the second overall. And and the question that I keep on hearing about Daniel Jones is, I don't think he'll ever be the guy that can raise the level of play around him. Do you think Mitchell Trubisky can raise the, the, the level of play around, guys? No. Uh, listen, I, I know you guys are split on that. that. Now, with Matt Nagy in place and some of the additional moves they've made, now you're starting to kind of see, okay, what, what it could be. Yeah. But there's no, there wasn't any definitive, oh, this guy's going to be a stud, even though he was a second overall pick after one year starting. And he didn't have a Kyler Murray season. He didn't have a Dwayne Haskins season. I think Dave Gettleman, as you call him, yeah. he, he did Daniel Jones a disservice. He did Daniel Jones a disservice. He, he, he ran his mouth a little too much. He let slip, you know, how much he, he adored Daniel Jones, which, which may have caused his own uh, paranoia in terms of another team trading up to get him, as opposed to being able to get him maybe in the teens. Yeah. It, it comes down to, and, and this is generally the case for most quarterbacks, however talented they might be, is where'd you end up? Can you protect them? Do you have weapons? Do you have a decent scheme around them? What I saw on film, again, not being able to truly get a bead on what kind of player this is, look more like a day two pick to me. Yeah. But, but again, a lot of mitigating circumstances is good footwork, climbs the pocket. I appreciate those skills because that's, that's a bit of a lost art. I saw him get his head from one side of the field to the other, although there's some instances where the, the decision making is a little baffling. Yeah. And, and his deep ball is just entirely too flat. He's got to put more air on the football. But I'm with you guys. He got no help. He got no help from what's around him. So I, I understand the vitriol and why, how could you possibly go with Daniel Jones that high, whatever the case may be. Because again, based on our evaluation, there just there's a lot of question marks. Yeah. Some of which are are predicated on his own play, yeah. and then others outside of his control. Given the fact that all of the receivers were dropping passes, it was what the second highest rate in, in FBS. Mm -hmm. But to just write Daniel Jones off completely, I, I think that would be a mistake. You know, people want to throw out, you know, numbers and, and with no context. Oh, well, he only threw 59 touchdowns or whatever in, in his three years at Duke. Meanwhile, um, Haskins. Haskins threw 50 touchdowns in one year. Like, come, come on, man. It's, like, it's not an apples to apples comparison. Don't, don't it's that. not. Like, it's too well, absolutely. Like, it's completely on. different. Yeah, completely different. Crazy. Although, although I think we're all in agreement that if you're going to go quarterback at six, Haskins probably should have been the yeah, pick. Haskins. Yeah. With their second first round pick, the 17th pick overall, they went out and they got Dexter Lawrence. I, I understand here from Clemson, defensive lineman, tackle, however you want to call him. But I understand the pick in terms of the talent. I'm just Definitely. trying to figure out what's the plan. Uh, we know that that um, David Gettleman liked Josh Allen. Yes. Um, but, you know, when Daniel Jones and could he have gone – we heard Allen six and then Daniel sure. Jones 17 or, you know, but um, we heard they tried to get back into the top 10 to get Josh Allen. But I think I think the Jags, once they saw what, what the, the, the picks the Giants made, the Jags ran up. And said, Sorry, We're not okay. passing up this guy. So, yeah. 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 Um, so I, I'm just trying to figure out the plan. What, what's the plan with Dexter Lawrence there? Yeah, man. Like, like you said, I love the player. Dexter Lawrence, man, he's a big, physically imposing uh, the push pull technique. He, he mastered that 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 technique. Is this hard to move off a point of attack? I think his underrated pass rushing skills, I think he can get to the quarterback also. So I love Dexter Lawrence as a player. 
But if you're thinking about the New York Giants and, and their biggest needs, I think edge rusher could have been a better option there. Mm-hmm. But you always fault teams for not picking the best player available. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's just what it was. The New York Giants had Dexter Lawrence a lot higher than on their board than other players in the class, and, and they picked the best player available. I think that's exactly what it was. I think it was a matter of this is the best defensive player on the board and, and very well could have been the top player on the board for the Giants. You know, the Giants have done a lot um, throughout the offseason trying to kind of reconfigure their offense. Obviously, we're, we're, we're well, you know, it's well documented, the Odell Beckham trade, but they bring in Zeitler, got Golden Tate, they locked up Sterling Shepard, they're expecting big things from, from Ingram, got Saquon in the back. So they've done things, and, and you go back another year, they bring in Nate Solder, Will Hernandez. They're, they're trying to kind of play it from the inside out, yeah. all right? Yeah. And, and, and that's not a, we don't have an issue with that. Not necessarily, I take a little issue with the Odell Beckham trade, yeah. but... We don't have an issue with trying to, to 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 formalize your offense from the inside out. So so they look to the defensive side. They bring in Dexter Lawrence, and, and you're right, Heavy. I think he does have he's, he does have some underappreciated pass rush skills. Yeah. Um, but when you look at the, the entirety of that defense, he's not going to be a consistent force necessarily in, in in terms of getting after the passer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Although there's also a question mark in terms of their ability to stop the run. You know, I like Dalvin Tomlinson. I like R.J. McIntosh BJ and B.J. Hill. Hill. I, yeah. I like those players. Um, but Dex Lawrence is more talented than all of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and and he's a better pass rusher than all of them. So so it's kind of one of those situations where, okay, maybe we could have went Montez Sweat, perhaps. Pass rusher. You know what I mean? But we feel like Lawrence is actually more of a chess piece because he can play you know, the nose, he can play the five technique, he can give you a little three technique if necessary. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we'll ultimately see how that plays out. But I'm with you. I'm with you. Love the player, the, the, the fit, not even the fit, but the, the needs otherwise. Yeah. You know, it's kind of weighing and, those two things. And, and now I'm thinking about it. You think about a James Betcher defense. Mm-hmm. It's a lot like Todd Bowles. Uh, that 3-4 defense, they want to send a lot of pressure and blitzes to the quarterback. You want your, your front three to do the dirty to work. To do the dirty work, yeah. and then you're sending blitzes spread, whether it be your nickel corner, your yeah. linebacker position. So maybe they just thought that for their defensive scheme, having a Dexter Lawrence will be better than having maybe a Montez sweat off the edge. Sure. I, and, and I can, okay. I can, I can, I can kind of understand that. It, yeah. it goes back to my original point, you probably heard in the previous video, is what happens when you need to get home without sending a blitz? When you're playing those wily veterans who can carve you up, if you try to blitz, what happens then? Yeah. That's, that's the question mark. And, and the biggest mm-hmm. question mark, even though they drafted three cornerback mm-hmm. positions, these mm-hmm. guys are young. So on yes. the back end, they yes. still have question marks in that secondary. Absolutely. And we're going to get to that. And y'all said it all. It's beautiful. I'm going to chime in, but you got it. <laughs> with their third first round pick, which, you know, they traded away their second round pick, the fourth and the fifth, uh, to jump back to number 30, and they grab DeAndre Baker. Was that cornerback one from? My, yeah. Cor- cornerback one, one from Georgia. Best, best pick they made. In my opinion, when, when I when I saw that particular pick, I thought I thought okay, I, I you know what I mean? I, okay, you did the Daniel Jones thing. All right, that created you know controversy and hysteria. Dexter Lawrence loved the player. Maybe they could have gone in a different direction. Then I thought DeAndre Baker, well that that fits a need, and he's the top corner. He's the top corner on the board for you, Hadley. Yeah, it was, and, and for me as well. So you know I. I there was thought maybe that he was falling into the second round after a poor combine performance, but I used a first round talent, so I had no issue with that pick whatsoever. Yeah, I love love uh, DeAndre Baker. Just his mirroring ability, his movements. Uh, I think he can play zone or man. I think the Giants are gonna probably ask him to play a lot more man because, like I said, they they're trying to blitz, they're trying to get after the quarterback. So mm-hmm. the guys on the back end needs to hold up, and I think Baker will be just fine back there. Didn't allow a touchdown in two years at the University of Georgia. Man, he was just. He was top notch, man. He was yeah. my cornerback one, like you guys said. Did, did they did they get their pass rusher in the third round, ninety fifth pick? You know, Shane Zimenez from Old Dominion. What would you call him? All fair. What do you say? He was a poor I, man. I call him a poor man's Montez Sweat. Yeah. Um, I think he wins with effort as a as a pass rusher. I, I, I like him setting the edge better. He's a better run defender. Very aware, high IQ football player. I see that a lot of times where he gets his hands up in the passing lane, mm-hmm. bat style passes, strong. So. Even though I don't know if he's the, the, the pass rusher, the bendy guy that maybe the Giants were looking for, I think he could still hold up as, as a run edge setter. Definitely, definitely. And looking at him, he's got the long arms. He's got, the, like you said, the strength. And I, the one thing I was watching, I was like, man, I just need him to, to use that bull rush a little bit more, convert that, that speed to power that he's got going on there. But um, I, I like the pick. You know, and 
with that particular pick, when you kind of juxtapose that against what they did in terms of Dexter Lawrence, mm -hmm. I mentioned it before, they, they weren't good against the run last year. Yeah. They really weren't. Mm -hmm. And and those two picks, I think, go a long way in terms of improving their run defense. You know, it's a passing league, so ultimately you think about, okay, how can we affect the passer? But if you, if you can't stop the run, you're getting gashed. It, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, no, it doesn't matter no whether chance. you can get to the passer or not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I, that, that, that's a solid pick. It's a solid pick. My, I, I know they did address the position group, but I think, I think the Giants, they haven't really solved that linebacking second level issue, whether it be pass rusher or guys inside stopping the run. Alec Ogletree, he flashes every once in a while, but he just he just doesn't hold up against the run. Yep. You know, you've been working with the BJ Goodson, and you've done a number of different guys, and we're just trying to figure out, okay, who are the mainstays? Who are the guys that can go in there, play three downs, and be you know equally effective against the run as the pass? Yeah, that, that second level is a problem. The need is is as glaring as when they had Eric Flowers at left tackle, right tackle, all that. I mean, it's it's, it's not good, but again. The thought process is we got all these linemen. Mm -hmm. We'll put that in front of them and sure. see what happens. See what so. happens. I, you know, it's interesting because I, I feel like this team could have, what, what they did at corner in terms of adding several corners, we'll get to a couple more. Mm -hmm. um, they could have done that at the linebacker position. You understand what I'm saying? I think they could have, they could have thought in that way as well. Mm -hmm. But, you know, perhaps, again, with, with Betcher's defense and the way that they're trying to attack, they don't necessarily place that that same level of emphasis on that particular position group. My, my, the only reason why I felt maybe that might change is because of Dave Gettleman, you know, with the Luke Keekleys and, and, yeah. and what they had Thomas in Carolina, Davis. Thomas yeah. Davis, yeah. you know, maybe, maybe that might change. But that wasn't the case in this particular draft class. All right, so in the fourth round with the 108th pick, they chose cornerback Julian Love from Notre Dame. Is it, is it Notre Dame or Notre Dame? How do you say it? I don't know. Notre Dame? I don't know. I don't know. I've heard it all different ways. I'm just saying, you know, I don't know, man. You know, depending on where you live, you know, Midwest, whatever. Julian Love from Notre Dame. This is a guy, you know, watching on film, you know, initially I thought, yo, this this guy is is a man-to-man -man corner. He's a guy who can, and it's, it's the kind of corner they want, is, is he can reroute people at the line of scrimmage. But yeah. there are times, there are times when his footwork is sloppy, mm -hmm. it's not good, and, and people blow right past him or he'll miss the jam. Um, so can't afford that. No, no, that's that's that's, that's six no, points. That's no bueno. Um, that's six so points. in this defense, it's the type of corner they want, and he played left corner, right corner, and he played in the slot. He played all over. But, I've um, seen him as safety. safety. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So it, it, it's the type of corner they want. Just if they can fix that one little issue, they might have a player here in Julian. Yeah, I, I had that he was instinctive. You know, uh, smart football player. Uh, got his hands on the ball. I think he's at best when he puts his hands on the receiver and yep. then uses the sideline as an extra defender. Um, but you know, in the, in the rookie training camps, they they have him inside. They have him at slot corner. Okay. Footwork, his technique. I don't know if he can hold up in the slot. I think he needs to be on the outside zone. But we'll see, man. I think that the value is a fourth round player. I think it was good value good there. Value, you know, a lot of people had him as a day two corner. So going getting him in the fourth round is good value. But I just want to see how he plays in in that slot that the Giants want him to play there. With the first fifth round pick, the Giants. Selected Ryan Connolly, the 143rd pick. Um, overall, linebacker from Wisconsin. Watching his tape, this is a guy, he's he's where he's supposed to be. Um, and I kind of liken him to Blake Cashman. Mm -hmm. Blake Cashman got a little bit more pop, a little bit more juice, um, juice to mm -hmm. him. Ryan Connolly, n not not really. But but he is a guy who who can diagnose, you know, and and he can he can fight through the trash, get through the trash um, fairly well. But again, the, the one knock that I have on him is his speed, sideline to sideline. That's kind of exactly. his game. Yeah, man, lack of athleticism. Um, but he's that he's Wisconsin tough, very instinctive, like you said. He plays with a chip on the shoulder, man. He's a former walk on, so he's fighting every day, and, yeah. and he's going to be fighting um, on on this Giants team also. Yeah, I, I, it goes back to my my point about them apparently prioritizing stopping the run. You know, it didn't work out. We weren't able to get one of those. You know, upper echelon pass rushers in this class. So I think they, they may have, you know, they may have yanked. Let's get the talent that we've identified and, and prioritized on the back end and then add some guys to help out against the run. You know, and my last note I had on him, I remember, is that, you know, he, he might take somebody's spot at that second. I, I think I think on this roster, it would not surprise me. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me. With their second, fifth round pick, 171st, nice, 171st pick. They selected Darius Slay, a wide receiver out of Auburn, and I didn't know anything about this guy. I looked at the tape, and let me tell you something. 
he might be the best receiver to get off the line of scrimmage just using his feet. Mm. It's nasty. Outside, inside, however you, how, however you like it. So you got ultra tendencies? I mean, it ain't that nice. Okay. It, it, it ain't that right. smooth. Right. I don't know if there's ever been a receiver that smooth. Okay. But um, you know, if if we, if we caught him in a in a, in a in a club dancing and he was he was cutting rope, <laughs> that's <laughs> surprising. The feet, the feet were nice, mate. Inside, outside, mm -hmm. slide. It didn't matter. It really didn't matter. There were times where he was open, and I don't know what uh, what's his name? Sit him. Sit him. I don't know what he was looking at because yeah. dude was open. He wasn't yeah. going to the football, so. You know, and, and he got speed. So, yeah, it's a nice addition with, to complement the Golden Taste, the Sterling mm -hmm. Shepherds of the world on that yeah. football team. You got a guy outside, got good feet, can, can beat you deep, you know, stretch the field for the New York Giants. Yeah, those got to put some more in on the football. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, the, the flat, the flat yeah. one, that ain't yeah. it. That ain't it. In the sixth round with the 180th pick, they selected Corey Ballantyne, DB, from Washburn. You know, Ballantyne, he, he got the man covered talent. Uh, you know, we spoke about it with this Giants defense. Mm -hmm. They want to send pressure and play man on the back end. But so he's got a lot of a pre-draft buzz for him. So yeah. I think it was good value um, in the sixth, sixth round. round for Ballantyne. Yeah. With a pair of seven-round picks, uh, the Giants selected George Asafo, Ajay, and Chris Slayton. They, they just went back to the trenches with these two guys, one offensive tackle and George and, and defensive lineman and, and Chris Slayton from Syracuse watching these two. George, he's not going to give you a whole lot of push. But he's gonna get you enough so that Saquon can get around the corner, and we know Saquon don't need much, right? You know, and and, and he's a, he's a pretty good pass blocker from what I've seen. And when you talk about a Slayton, Mr. Slayton from Syracuse, I, I like the selection because he has quick hands, he converts his speed to power. Just you know, it's, it's gonna be a developmental thing, you know. So, sure. Yeah, I so think both these guys developmental seventh round prospects. Mm -hmm. You know, Gettleman loves his trenches, so yeah. he had to keep yeah, keep exactly. attacking those trenches. Giants fans, hit us up in the, the comments section. Let us know how you felt about the selection. There was a lot of YouTube videos about the reactions of that first pick. Um, but let us know how you feel. What what direction would you have gone with the first two picks, maybe first three picks? Um, and, 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 yo, man, is, is Eli the guy? Now, now that you've had some time to, to digest it, mm -hmm. you know, have, have you come around? Have, have you come around? You know what I mean? I don't know of anybody. I've yet to meet anyone who had Daniel Jones other than Dave Gettleman as their top quarterback. I, 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 I've, I, yet to, I, I, I've yet to meet that individual. Again, I'm okay if that's your guy. Sure. I just feel like he didn't have, that didn't have to be the number six pick. Okay. If it was Mitchell Trubisky, though, you'd have been all right with it. Yeah. Hashtag yeah. Big Blue. <laughs> <laughs> like, subscribe, comment. <laughs> I'm